congratulations on <laughs> Thank this. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. You I look, mean, you poured you poured everything yeah, into this book, you huh? Know, I did, and you know, you know a lot of the work that I do with with our vets and our players with, yes. with MVP. Yep. And I've been really open to that close circle. Right? I'm vulnerable. Look, look, I, man, being involved in in mixed martial arts for a long time, like no one's questioning my manhood. So I could cry in the drop of a dime. And what we say in those circles, man, we we really help each other. And this is an opportunity for me to help a lot more people than just our close circle and use my own struggles. And, you know, it's so it's so funny, man. I am always so proud of my scars from fighting. So I'm always willing to tell people, yeah, my back's messed up because, you know, Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell are beating the crap out of me. And so I got I've ruptured L4, L5 uh, four times and L1, L2 twice and herniated C2, 3, 4, 5 and broke that ankle twice and woke up during surgery there and broke this seven times. And man, look, you can see I get excited. Well, now it's time we start bragging about our mental scars as much as our physical scars. That's what we need to do. So without my gray, I call it, my depression, anxiety, I, I realize I actually wouldn't be where I am right now. Like it's motivated me to get where I am and, and to do all these, these great things. When did you first realize that you could use it as motivation as opposed to letting it drag you under, Jay? So, well, first of all, it's, um, it's my earliest childhood memory. Like I don't know what it's like to not live in the gray. Seriously? Yeah. Okay, so what? what's your, how, when did you? I, I don't know if it's, you know. When did you start living in gray or realize no, I, that you I, were? I just don't know another thing. And man, it's really hard when you live, when you have my level of depression, anxiety, and that's where I, <clears throat> my darkness is able to help, I think, lead others. So like, I've got to go through it to be able to talk about it. And you know, this book is for people like me, but people like, for everybody, we just went through a pandemic. Everybody's going through some sort of gray, right? And social media sucks. So, you know, <laughs> we all think our our lives suck because we're comparing ourselves to everybody else's fil filtered fraction of a second and we feel left out. So it's for, for everybody. But, um, man, I don't know what it's like to wake up in the blue. Like, I just... Even just, today, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, so every single day I wake up and there's a lot of things I got to do to get myself convinced the sky's not falling the world doesn't hate me. Everyone's not out to get me. Things aren't crashing because when you have my level of depression, anxiety, you don't feel worthy uh, of being loved, you know, and you kind of can't look at yourself the way everybody else sees you. So you see all that. So as a result of me not really understanding how to love myself from the inside out, I've had to go out and do all these big things to try and get a bunch of love from the outside in. And I'm, I'm trying to get it where I could piece together uh, enough of that and enough blue where um, maybe we meet, meet in the middle and, you know, and I could start feeling love from the inside out. Like that's, I'm a work in progress. I'm still going. And this book for me, um, it's a healing journey for me also. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help everybody else out. But at the same time, man, I still need the help. How many uh, have you come across in the NFL who have similar issues jay Harry, you can't be in the nfl and not be crazy like you gotta <laughs> <laughs> it's, <one way. laughs> it's true though but also right. like anybody who's great you can't be great and not be crazy like your work ethic and this is what we tell people in mvp our charity all the time for guys when they finish up playing in the nfl like you play in the nfl that's not who you are right what's behind your rib cage right that got you to beat out millions and millions and millions to play on that level that's who you are, and that's a level of crazy to to put that kind of work in and to say, hey, I'm going to put a football helmet on every day and go bang my body into Aaron Donald. Like, you're off. You know, for <laughs> me, I'm great in chaos. I think these players are great in chaos. Mm -hmm. I suck in calm. So when, man, I was calm, oh, I'm not good, I would take three steps up in a cage with Chuck Liddell and, hey, come kick me in the face. Like, hey, give me more CTE. Like, that's off. I'm off, right? And... um what I think the problem in the, the NFL mm -hmm. is they don't talk about it enough. They aren't, you know, it's um, it's it's not being used as a badge of honor like it should be. And that's what I'm trying to get everybody to shift. Like, it, I'll tell you this. Every single person I have had the conversation with mm -hmm. in the world of fighting, in the world of football, whatever it is, um, and I only started coming forward with this in these terms, if you will, within the last two years it's gotten me closer to every single one of them. So anybody who's afraid at home for the shame, I 
guaranteeing you that it will get you closer with someone when you could share. And you never know when you share who's going to come back and say, oh, my God, <sighs> you? Me too. And I've, I've had an awful lot of that. Um, people, look, I hide it. Great. I'm always laughing. Big personalities. Yes. I'm, like, I'm going through life relentless, relentlessly. Um, so I've hit it all these years. And uh, I didn't hide my crazy, but I always hid my pain.